There's, there's a famous quote from Steven Weinberg who said, the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. Would anyone want to agree with that? Is, is it pointless? I mean, it's kind of cool that we're here, but um, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's really pointless. Yeah, uh, I, think it's, I think you got it exactly wrong. I think the more it, it seems pointless, the more it would be incomprehensible. And the fact that it is comprehensible, uh, to me, it suggests that there is something like a point. But I can. What's the point being that we can, well, we can is, comprehend there, there it? Is in a some comprehensible way? scheme of things that nature isn't just arbitrary or absurd. That yeah. there is uh, a classic example. I'm doing too much talking. You interrupt me. <laughs> oh, I will if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> the classic example is the Higgs boson. So the Large Hadron Collider, 8 billion euros. Um, it wasn't built on a whim, it was built on a, a theoretical um, expectation which from the 1960s. Uh, there was a rational scheme. Uh, it may not have been the right one, but nobody expected when you built the Large Hadron Collider you would find absurdity. You get to the next level down, you expect to find meaningful order. It may not have been the Higgs boson, it may have been something else, but you wouldn't e expect that everything's ordered and rational down and down and down and suddenly it's all ridiculous. You, you couldn't be a scientist without, as an act of faith, believing that the universe is ordered in a rational and intelligible way all the way down. So that's an act of faith, just like people have an act of uh, faith in a, a god or a necessary being or whatever it might be. You cannot do science unless you have uh, a belief that the world makes sense and that human beings, at least in some limited way, can make sense of it. So Ard, let me, let me bring you into this. Is, is the ultimate point uh, sort of discovering this, the underlying order of things? I don't know that's the ultimate point, but back to um, Weinberg's quote. So for a Christian like myself, it's kind of the other way around. So you think that the world is ordered and perhaps discoverable precisely because you think there's some creator behind you made it in a certain way. And so therefore, the more you understand that, the more cool it is in many ways. <clears throat> And I think Paul's point is if, if you actually came, if, if it turned out it was all chaotic or, uh, you know, you couldn't understand it and it was kind of fickle and strange, that would be surprising if you started from the premise that there may be a God. It may not be surprising if you think there's no God because then I think all bets are off. And so it's kind of the other way around. I don't actually think he actually believes that. So I think that was just a, you know, a rhetorical flourish. Of course, it's worked really well because you remembered it. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that most, in fact, I was, I'll, I'll take a step on. And a friend of mine who's a sociologist at Rice, Elaine Howard Eklund, done huge, probably the biggest studies of scientists. And their, she started out asking them about their religious beliefs. And it turns out scientists, a lot of scientists have very, a lot of interesting religious beliefs, a lot more than people realize. But one thing she told because, me, I mean, the assumption is often that uh, with the, the subset of scientists are far less religious than the general population. It's a complicated story. Yeah, but, but I, might, I won't summarize her. But in, in fact, they, a lot of scientists are quite spiritually interested in things. There's a small fraction that are kind of rabid, hardcore atheists, and a large fraction have all kinds of other beliefs, often affected by their own upbringing. But one of the things she noticed in these discussions with scientists is that they all kept talking about the beauty of their work and the aesthetic. And, and, that, and so she's gone back and looked at this and redone a whole bunch of interviews. Across, the, across India, Italy, the US, and one other country, I forget which one it was. And you just find it almost universal. Scientists talk about the beauty and the something. So the aesthetic draw is very strong. And, uh, and actually it correlates positively with kind of how well established they are and how successful they are, the more that they're likely to, to use that beauty as something that, that draws and something that the, the, be the beauty, beauty meaning, the, meaning everything sort of fits together? Yeah, or, so it can, it can be, a, a biologist tend to say it looks really pretty when looking at my microscope. Physicists tend to say there's something intrinsic about the way that the math works together. It's very elegant. But the idea that understanding, so these are not, these are not things that they don't understand. These are things they do understand. And the more they understand it, the more it, this draws them. Which is, I mean, which is interesting because, you know, there is also that feeling that, oh, will science explain away uh, the mysteries and will that take away from... And we have the rainbow. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you're saying just the reverse. I think it's the reverse. And I think that's, uh, that is actually a pretty common view among scientists. So the kind of nihilistic thing you get from Weinberg, I don't believe that he thinks that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lucien, yeah. what, what, what about you? Well, I, you know, I think to me the, um, 
the feeling of being able that uh, anything is comprehensible <laughs> at all. Um, the fact, you know, that I, I often um, to point out to people is that, you know, it is a really amazing thing about astronomy that physics and chemistry work essentially the same. I mean, there's different domains here in labs that we can create versus that what is out in space. But the fact that the basic physics and chemistry work the same in labs on Earth as in the deep cosmos is kind of what underpins a lot of our ability to learn things about the universe. And the ability to do that seems very profound to me. Now, there's a difference to me between saying that and saying that that necessitates there being a point. Um, I certainly feel like the, um, the orderedness, the ability to understand something about the way the universe works um, is very pleasant, uh, but I don't, I don't know that it compels me to say that there's a point to the whole thing. Um, it's a little like how I, my experience of like, you know, imagine the most beautiful landscape you've ever seen, um, whatever it happens to be. You know, as somebody who comes from a physics and astronomy background, I can look at that and see things working and it's almost like having an augmented reality experience um, through uh, my, my scientific practice. Um, but would I say, well, what's the point of this, this landscape? Probably not, but I think that that's um, something to do with my personality.